It's been over two years since the original Dead Space scared the pants off just about everyone who played it. Its sense of isolation, brooding soundtrack, and vile necromorphs piled on the atmosphere so thick that some couldn't bring themselves to finish it. As one of the only remaining survival horror franchises left, Dead Space 2 has an entire genre on its shoulders. <laughs> it made you see things, didn't it? Things you didn't want to see. It spoke to me. Once again, you play as mining engineer Isaac Clark. After exterminating the necromorph infestation on the USG Ishimura and dealing with the death of his girlfriend in the first game, he is awakened in the psych ward of Titan Station, a human colony set up on Saturn's largest moon. He thought he had destroyed the ancient artifact called the Red Marker and the evil along with it, but Titan Station is swarmed with necromorphs and his dead girlfriend is making cameo appearances. Much like the first game, the real lore is told through optional employee logs and on-the-fly transmissions. The cutscene quotient is certainly higher, but the post-mortem interactions with his girlfriend eventually wear thin. Most characters are never developed beyond simple banter and one-liners, making it difficult to care about their fate. The story is pretty forgettable until the final act, which has more twists and turns than a pile of guts. Dead Space 2's level design is about as straightforward as it gets. It's a corridor shooter through and through where you enter an area, the doors lock, and you're trapped until you kill everything that moves or solve a puzzle. Exploration is reserved for small nooks and crannies where you might be lucky enough to find an ammo cache or some health. It's impossible to get lost, and even if you lose your bearings, you can click the right stick to see the way forward. Save points are strategically scattered, along with stores to buy new weapons or gear, and benches that you can utilize to upgrade everything with nodes you unearth. The weapons follow the same utilitarian aesthetic as their forebears. Essentially a collection of mining tools, they're extremely effective at tearing the necromorphs to bits. The plasma cutter is Isaac's armament of choice, allowing him to switch its orientation to remove limbs both horizontally and vertically. A lot of the other tools are essentially shooter staples in a mining wrapper, so you get the typical proximity mines and flamethrowers in addition to the dissection apparatuses. Toss in alternate fire options for each, and it's a well-rounded arsenal, all slanted towards creating as much carnage as possible. <laughs> Enemy variety was an issue in the first game, and while there are a few new ones here, you'll still tire of separating the same limbs from the same torsos by game's close. Absolutely frightening boss fights are more frequent, but many are reused. This is a shame considering the campaign lasts around a dozen hours. Multiplayer modes are seemingly shoehorned into just about every game, but the Dead Space franchise is fertile ground. The four-on-four -four matches place Engineer against Necromorph. The Engineers try to complete objectives, while the other side tries to rip them limb from limb. Most of the goals involve standing at a console waiting for a meter to fill, or trying to destroy or defend. At the end of each round, the roles are reversed, which is a good thing because you end up spending more time waiting to respawn than actually playing as the Necromorphs. At least when you do, you're able to choose from four different creatures that will level up with use. Each monster has its own unique strengths and weaknesses, but against the stasis-wielding engineers, they all feel way too underpowered. It's fun for a while, but the lack of balance and too much downtime cripples its long-term prospects. You'll also need an online pass to play it, so keep that in mind if you plan on buying it used. Dead Space 2's campaign is straightforward and plenty long. Since the nodes to upgrade weapons and Isaac's rig are so scarce, you'll need to play it multiple times to really experience the full arsenal. The multiplayer option isn't particularly compelling over the long haul, but it's a nice bonus. Still, a cooperative campaign would better serve the franchise. Just like the first game, ammo is at a premium. Even if you're conscious of it, you'll still find yourself in plenty of situations where you have a couple shots left from a few different guns and you need to figure out how to make it work. While the traditional puzzles are mostly relegated to hacking doors, the combat itself often becomes one. It's a delicate balance to walk the line between trial and error tedium and player satisfaction, but Dead Space 2 manages to stay on the positive side of the equation. Where in the first game, you can basically use the plasma cutter the entire time. The ammo limitations force you to use a bigger arsenal this time around. 
it imparts a lot of strategy into the mix, and if all else fails, using Kinesis to save bullets is a solid strategy. If anything, the first game's big hook, strategic dismemberment, has taken a bit of a backseat to typical gunplay. Chopping off limbs is still effective, but with limited ammo for these types of weapons, it no longer dominates the play. What changes the gameplay more than anything is the increase in enemy projectiles. With creepy crawly spitting or projectile vomiting, you hardly ever get a chance to sit back, fire, and reload. It just makes an already tense game even more so. Then there are dog-like enemies that literally stalk you and then charge from around corners. Not all the scares are legit though. Monster closets are everywhere and enemies routinely spawn just behind you for some cheap deaths. The variety is definitely improved. Gone are the long slogs through one blood-streaked gray corridor after another. The zero-gravity sections have been made a lot more manageable thanks to thrusters added to Isaac's exosuit, and you get a lot more set-piece moments. Dead Space 2 nails the equilibrium between isolation and action. The gameplay is not perfect, though. Pulling out an unloaded weapon does not trigger an automatic reload, which can literally get Isaac killed. The controls can also feel a little clunky at times, and you'll notice this more in multiplayer than in the campaign. There are also some annoying inventory quirks, like being unable to use a health pack on the ground because all your slots are full. Playing Dead Space 2 can be summed up in one word, intense. The lack of a pause screen means you never get a breather once engaged, enemies morph into new, unpredictable forms, and you're literally on edge every single moment for fear of a necromorph making a surprise appearance. There are a few survival horror hangovers, but almost all of the trade-offs are ultimately worth it. We've seen it time and again with this generation of machines. A developer builds an engine and then every subsequent game looks basically the same. With Dead Space 2, the jump in graphical fidelity is profound. Textures look crisper, character models are more detailed and believable, and the lighting is some of the best we've ever seen. Enemy animation has also received some attention to make the morphing look even more believable. Sometimes it's worth dying just to witness the absolutely sadistic kill sequences. While the graphics shine, the audio design is even better. The droning soundtrack can wear over time, but the sound effects and audio mix will strike fear in your heart time and again. As an experiment, we turned down the sound, and the game was almost comical at points without it. The first couple hours with Dead Space 2 are very familiar, but it's one of those rare games that just keeps getting better. It's still a very dreary game that can make long play sessions a challenge, yet there are scores of moments that stick with you for quite some time. The multiplayer is a disappointment, but it's a much more accessible game that won't leave fans in a lurch. Pick it up, turn down the lights, turn up the sound, and check your nerves at the door.